Hi everyone, this is Brandon Burgess with Irrigator Tech and what I'm going to do today is go ahead and go over the test procedures on a pressure vacuum breaker backflow prevention assembly. So, first thing we want to do is notify, so I already walked and talked to the owners of this property. I told them that I'm going to be shutting the water off momentarily and that I'm here to test their backflow to certify it. Um, again, this has to be done once a year. Okay, so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take off the canopy. So there's three little screws here. These are my Phillips. So we don't want to lose these, so I always stick them in the dish so they don't go anywhere. Okay, kind of clean it up a little bit. Okay. First thing I want to do is I want to bleed the test cock. So these are the two test cocks here. We got one and two. So we, ind we indicate. So we indicate number one and number two by the direction of flow. Of the water, water is coming up here. So I got one and two. Shut off valve one. Shut off valve two. Okay, now it's time for me to put on my appropriate fittings. Okay, so these are my appropriate fittings. So this takes a test cock and then gives me a nipple where I can actually connect my gauge to it. So these are extras. So equipment that I'm going to need here, I'm going to need my differential pressure gauge. I need my high side hose, which is my red hose. I also need my bleed valve arrangement. So what my bleed valve arrangement does is it'll compensate for a leaky number one shutoff valve. Right. So I go ahead and connect that to the number one test cock. Connect the high side bleed valve to my gauge. And I test, hook my hose up to my number two test cock. Okay. So now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna open test cock number two. And I'm gonna bleed the air out of the line. Close that up. Now I need to hold my gauge at what we call the critical level, which is going to be where my air inlet opening point is. So I would use the center, center of the gauge. So I go ahead and close my number. Okay, so then what I have is the critical level, which is the air inlet opening point here in the center of my gauge. I go ahead and close shutoff valve number two. I go ahead and close shutoff valve number one. So now what I do is I'm going to release all the pressure in this assembly and I'm going to do that by bleeding on my gauge. So I'm going to pull the water out from the hose out of the assembly. So as the gauge drops, I'm going to watch and see when my opening point is. Okay, so that opened just at one PSI. So what so that means that this passes just barely. Remember that's my lowest value I can accept. I want to take my hose off, connect it to my bleed valve arrangement, allowing all the water to drain out of the body. Allow all the water to drain out of the body. And then I want to physically look and make sure that my air inlet 
it's completely open and it does and we mark that down in our test kit as fully opened. I want to then close test cock number two, re-energize the system. Now I'm going to get some splash up so I like to put the dish back on it. Makes a little bit less of a mess. Okay. So now that I'm charged again, I want to open test cock number one. Open my bleed, get some water coming out. Go ahead and turn that off. Again, I want to make sure I'm at that critical level. Close shut off valve number one. Take my screwdriver. Now I'm going to open test cock number two. So what I'm doing here is I'm allowing pressure again out of the assembly watching my gauge go down. And what I'm gonna see here is how much pressure I'm holding back on my number one check valve. So as the pressure leaves this assembly, my check valve is closing. Since I set up with my hose and my gauge, I'm below the check valve. As that check valve closes, it's giving me a pressure reading. And now that's what I'm, it's indicating here. On the gauge. So that's a value of? 2.4 we're looking for a value of 1 psi or higher so this is a pass so I could go ahead close my test cocks remove my equipment These are very, very important. Do not leave these on your job site. The whole kit costs quite a bit of money. Okay, so I want to repressurize. Two. And then return service slowly. All right, so that's it. Now, all I have to do is just re-enter these screws on this canopy. Um, this backflow is now certified. Again, when these things have to be tested once a year, so this passed. So I'm certifying it as safe for this year. And okay, so this backflow is certified. So hope you enjoyed this video. Uh, please leave me any comments, any suggestions at this um, for the video. Um, we love giving you guys these videos. We love going out in the field, performing things. Um, so yeah, any input would be greatly appreciated. So I'll see you on the next one.